Yeah. Who was this? The little Chinook. Shelby? Andy's. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Was he over here the other day? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, the evening explorer. They came over the other night. Yeah. Did they? The little son, boy, I mean, she was, she was right on me. Morgan didn't say a word hardly the whole time she was here. Uh -uh. <laughs> Said something to her, she just, her face just get long, you know. Yeah, she's there. 13, almost 13, so. She's got that weird age. Probably gets that from her dad. From what he's, he's, a, he's an asshole, I think, for what I can. That sandwich? Yeah. That looks good. Yeah, they've got a real lot of good stuff in there. And it's easy, normal yeah. stuff you can make. Dad might like that. Tell me about when you went to your grandma's when you guys was kids. Can you say she used to cut up something for you guys, an apple oh, or a pear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'd come down and they lived on Webster Street. They'd go double things called. And uh, we look forward to it because we never had much once in a while. Grandpa Bush would keep drinking Tom and a little nickel cup of ice cream once in a while. Grandpa never had anything, you know. He always come down once in a while, you know, it's a treat. But then we'd come down to Grandma, and uh, we'd be there for a while. And pretty soon she'd go out and she'd get her pan and put the apples in them. She'd sit there and peel them and pour them. And man, that was, that was a big treat. That was a big treat for us. We'd go to Grandma's and get them apples peeled and quartered, you know. You just put them in your mouth. So just stuff like that, you know. Just, Could you? Know, when uh, Grandma died, she, we had the funeral at the house. We had the body laying in the state in the front room. So. They used to do that a lot back then, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you never went to funeral. Hmm. I don't know, it was something different back then. I mean, that's the way his Grandpa Bishop when he lived up on Sawdust Hill, because when we'd go to school, we'd walk right past his house all the time. So we went up on Second Street, grade school. And Grandpa was always sitting there, he always had him chewing the back of his spit to him. He'd sit there with his old dog. Your oven's hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, old dog called Pooch. And old Pooch laid by Grandpa all the time. Well. They had a meter reader was afraid of him. Every time he'd come, he'd take his damn flashlight. He broke all four of his legs on him. Boy, old Pooch had a hell of a time getting around. You know, oh my I, gosh. I thought, boy, if I'd been around there, somebody didn't know, found out something, you know, but Grandpa, Grandpa told me that's what happened. The meter reader man hit him with his flashlight, broke his legs, you know. Wow, what a jerk. Afraid he was gonna bite him or something. You know? They never bit him? Never. Shh. Poor old Grandpa, I mean, hell, he was so old, he couldn't get out. But if he did, it's time we spit tune over and have it all on the front porch, you know. <laughs> I know it was, it was a, Linda Franklin, it was really great because we lived, well, I lived on River Street there. Didn't Grandpa work on the railroad? Is that what oh, he yeah. did? Oh, yeah. And Grandma never worked? No. She just took care of you kids? She took care of us. Who was Boy, your? Well, we had to work when they had to get them dishes out of that cupboard and wash them every year. Never used them. Put them back in and get them out and wash them again. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. What was it? Special occasion dishes? No. No. Well, yeah, it was a good dishes. Yeah. You know? And they had to. She always had to boil the starch when she starts the shirts and stuff. You know? Well, I turned one over on me one time and burnt the crap out of me. Really? I, I got down. I think. Was down to one little spot I had here that was a scar. I remember that little white spot you used to have on your face. Yeah. Yeah. When we used to shave you with a comb, you always make us kids shave you with your comb. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your one of your siblings that you hung with all the time? Somebody that you like, you were closer to, like you know what I mean. Tom or Terry, I mean, they were closest to you. Yeah. That's who you did most well, of? Well, Tom, we had, we had the chicken coop up and back because Dad had never had a, a garage for his truck or his car. So at one time they had a big wreck over in Carlisle. That was when they made wooden box cars. Well, if you worked on a railroad, you could go get some of the wood. But Dad got enough and built a garage up there in the back in the alley. 
right next to it to put a build a chicken coop because Tom wanted to raise some ducks. So build it. And <clears throat> one year dad wanted to get a, a turkey. So he bought a turkey. Well come time for Thanksgiving. Tom says, When are you gonna kill that turkey? I, I, I don't know. I don't, don't think I can. He had to take that turkey down to Rosman's and got it. One that was already dead and gave him the one he got. <laughs> but some friend of his over around Wilmington gave it to him. It was a homegrown turkey, you know. And mom said, that ain't something. You can get a turkey and you can't kill it. <laughs> I couldn't do that. But Tom, he decided he wanted some race of ducks. So with the coop being up there, he's pretty good distance from the house, you know. But uh, they had... I think he had, when he set the hen on, I think he had about six little ducks popped out. Well, we'd go check them. Well, the mice got in and chewed their bills off. I mean, it was unreal. I mean, Weird. Chewed your bill, that's the only thing you done. Got your bill, and that was it. So they died, and we had to bury them. We had a funeral and everything for them in the backyard. We had the whole, we'd go about once every other week and dig them up and see if they'd turned into that. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and we had a apple tree there in the back because we had a, mom had a wash house on the back and we had a little shed out in the back of that and the outhouse was in the back of that. And uh, it was, had a, this apple tree and boy, them apples was green as grass. And we'd get up in that tree. Mom would tell us, don't eat them apples. Well, we'd get up in the tree and eat it. And we figured, well, we were safe. Mom didn't say us. But when we got the belly ache, she knew what the hell went on. I mean, you couldn't beat Mom. There was no way Mom was going to get you. But I mean, it was ill. Because the chief of police lived right down the street from us, Dutch Chamberlain. And... Uh, we had uh, Lord Neymar, he was a tree doctor. He lived right next to us. We lived at 14 North River. And the uh, other guy, he lived right next to us. And Heinlein's lived up the street. Pat Heinlein, she was my age. They lived two doors from us. I mean, it was a close neighborhood. The DePews lived across the street. I mean, it was a lot of fun up in there. The Lindsay's, they lived on up the next block from us, you know. The Tracy family, they was a big family at St. Mary's. And they lived at a corner there, had a big old house up there, it's still there. And uh, it was, we liked Franklin. I mean, it was just something, you know. Aunt Jane, she lived down on Main Street. Aunt Jane, she lived down. If you're going in Franklin, when you come up, you go up that one side and there's a grocery over here across the street from Aunt Jane. And they had gas and they had the old pump. You had to fill that thing up and then put it in your car, you know. And Aunt Jane had a a big mangle wall that take up half this room because she done ironing and stuff. She'd sit down on that mangle and iron all these sheets of stuff that people shared out in the back, you know. So, I mean, it was just, just stuff I mean, you. Tom and I both worked at Rosman's Grocery. He was a butcher. And I was a stock boy. Hmm. And before we, when we got, before we got the job, we'd pass out handbells. We'd have to go over and get the handbells at the printer's place. And Tom and I walked all over Franklin delivering that little handbell. What's a handbell? It's a little thing what they had instead of a newspaper. You just had this, it was a handbell about oh, okay. the size of one of these things. Mm -hmm. And you put it at each door, you know, and we'd go up and in plain view up in there, you go across the river, walking the whole time, you know. Hmm. I think we got, I don't know, ten dollars for it to pass them out, you know. Then we finally wound up working in the grocery. And Tom, he was a butcher. And during the war, to get meat, you had to go up and help slaughter. So Dad and Tom and Man Miller, he was the head butcher. Jimmy Rosman, they go to Pickwick. And Dad went a couple times. 
and take a sledgehammer and kill the beef, you know, to put her out. God. They hit in the head. That's the only way because they didn't. They was particular what they did, but that was the easiest way to try to get them and not work. You know, because they hit them in the head. You know, and Dad didn't think too much of that. You know, but he went just to help out because he didn't. He didn't get no meat to sell. And I mean, Rosman's was open on the weekends. That's when everybody went to the grocery. Well, the one night they was getting low because it used to be they just had big bags or boxes of eggs, you know, and you had to put them in a sack. Well, this one night, George told this one kid that had been there too long. <coughs> he says, run down the street to Kroger's and A&P and, and on down to on 6th Street, there was a little grocery, and see if you can get the egg stretcher. We need it for, for, for the bags, to stretch the bags for the eggs. <laughs> that kid went all the way down, asked him, oh, we ain't got him, somebody else can run. They had him run over up and down the street the whole evening. <laughs> he never did catch on. <laughs> I mean, it was fun, I mean, on Saturday night, I mean, that's everybody, streets in Franklin, just full of people, that's when they all done their shopping there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, uh, and we had in the back of the meat department, you go back if you wanted a chicken, they'd go out and get it, kill it, and dress it, and bring it out to you. And that's why they had done it. That's mm -hmm. how my mom did it. Did she? she raised chicken and eggs, and somebody, we were getting ready to go to town, and somebody knocked on the door and wanted to know if they could get a fresh chicken, and she went and chased her, put her old clothes on, and went out there and killed it and dressed it. And it was 10 cents. Oh my gosh. Couldn't do that. I cleaned me <coughs> a chicken coop. I picked many a chicken feathers. Used to dip them in hot water mm -hmm. and then pick the feathers and the pin, put them mm -hmm. off of there. It's the mess off the smell ever. Do you guys ever have something tradition all the time at Christmas? Do you guys always do something the same? No, I can't remember. Uh, Christmas, we never had much. I mean, we never expected much because Dad worked on the railroad. I mean, we didn't have any that kind of money. Was he but, gone a lot? Huh? Was he gone a lot since he worked on the railroad? Oh, he was a yard clerk. Oh, was he? He walked that whole thing. He went to the Maxwell. He went to Logan Long. He went to Charles A. Mash. And there was another one. There was four places he walked, checking them cars out, you know, because he had to keep track of them. Mm -hmm. And he was a yard clerk, and he had to mark that down, and they could tell where it was wrong. And finally, he got a, they, he'd been there 40, 42 years, and he was the youngest man there, so when they laid off, Pop got laid off. Well, they sent him up to, Marine City, and he walked all them cars down through Frigidaire down there. He was there by himself at night with his paper writing the numbers down. He did that. He went and walked it. Hmm. But I mean, it was, uh, and going in, in the grocery, when you go from the meat department to the back where they clean the chickens, they had a great big round uh, sauerkraut barrel that was wood. And every time we'd go back and we'd go, and then go I said, that shit now. I've ever seen that we used to do that. <laughs> you wear your hands so that's where you got making sauerkraut then. Huh? I said, so that's where you got to making sauerkraut then. Well, we just ate it. We didn't make but it. You used, you used to make it. Well, oh, when yeah. I was a kid, yeah. you had them crocs. You made sauerkraut all the time. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, I never regretted growing up where I did. And came right ahead and never. Aunt Hugh and Aunt Jane and them all, you know, we were just. Did you learn how to make sauerkraut because that store you worked at? Uh, Dad was more into it, you know. He, he knew what to do with it when we did it, you know, so. So you learned it from Grandpa? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Dad, I mean, we never had a lot. I mean, it was for years before we ever had an in-house. It was always the outhouse, you know. You went out, boy, you crept and you got done quick sitting out there <laughs> on that stool, you know. <laughs> When did you meet Mom? When I come back from the service, Mom says, they got a cat.